loud as a lion. As quiet as a cloud. As tough as a why not sure. As gentle as a lamb. As brave as a tiger. And as lazy as a lizard. And as busy as a bee. You put them all together. And you got me. <laughs> okay, honey. Okay, crawl under the covers. Jeffrey cried more than most babies. And I used to be afraid I'd abuse him. I tried to get help, but no one would believe how frightened I was. Those feelings seem to have gone away now. I wanted to visit my family again. Time had passed, and I was hoping to understand and accept what had happened during my childhood. I can't remember when it all started. Dad making me look at dirty pictures, touching me, making me touch him. I think I was five when I first tasted his semen. And soon after, he penetrated me. Dad wasn't part of this journey. There was nothing I wanted from him. When we were children, there was a court case, but everything went in his favor. He denied it then, and he still denies it. He was never imprisoned or treated for abusing us. And mother, she wasn't able to protect us. Mother and I were never able to get really close. When the family broke up, she sent us to live with Dad and his new wife. I used to be angry, but now I was hoping somehow I could reach her. Mom is 56, and she lives with my brother, Wilfred. seems so fragile. You know. We were awkward with each other. I have this picture of you when you were two years old. And you are sitting on Grandma's knee. I don't know if you remember the picture. Can I you remember, remember the sitting picture, yes, I do. You do? Well, it's unbelievable. Jeffrey looks almost the same as you do when you were two years old. Or, I don't know. Do you think you were two in that picture? I was, yeah. That's how I, Mom said I was two. He looks just like you. Same face. I sure would love to see him. I really would. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen him at all yet. I know. Well, I brought some pictures. Later, I'll sit down and show you. Well, that's good. 
Yeah, he's a pretty nice kid. Like a cigarette? No, thanks. Maybe I'll have one. We've never really gotten to know each other. John Our past is always coming between us. Oh, <laughs> bad for the health. Soon the small talk ran out. My brother Wilfred is easier to talk to. He's three years younger than I am. He's been in and out of jail on assault and drug charges. We get along, but there's distance between us too. He likes people, but it's hard for him to believe in himself. That's not hard to understand when you know his childhood was spent recovering from one beating after another. I used to actually expect it. I used to expect it. I used to expect it. It was hard to say or it's hard to explain, but when I was behind the corner of the counter in the stove and I was in the corner and he was kicking me and hitting me and, and the little dog we had, you know, he was barking, running around, trying to nip at daddy. And he picked the dog up and he threw him and busted the dog's back and killed the dog. Did your friends believe you? Did they believe you when you told them you'd been abused? People wouldn't believe. Probably if I never went through it, I wouldn't believe it either. One time when we were back on the farm, when I went to school with black eyes and fat lip, and the teacher was hassling me, what, you know, what's going on? How would you get this from? And I, I finally believed somebody. I was going to trust somebody one time, eh? And I told them, well, my dad's doing this to me. My dad did it, eh? And the school nurse and the children's aide came down on the farm, and they asked Dad what was going on. And uh, Dad said, what do you mean, what's going on? He said, well, Will Theory's coming to school with black eyes and foul lips, and he said, well, geez, him and Larry got in a fight, and, uh, you know, they believed him. You know, and what really makes me mad is that the, they came there to the farm, but they never once asked Larry or me if it happened to us. They, they simply asked you at the school, and then they went back and spoke well, to Well, I Dad. finally believed that somebody was going to help us, see? And then when nobody, when they left, like Dad used to always say, you tell anybody what goes on at home, that's it, you're in for trouble when you come back. No, nobody knows what goes on around here. You know. Wilford, what do you think Dad was doing when he came downstairs into the basement? Do you remember it? Well, I'll tell you, I was, uh, I didn't really know, and I was too scared to really look and find out, you know. Like, I, later on, I, I know what he was doing. At the time, I was too scared to even put my head through the curtains. So you never saw him with me? I saw him come in, and I saw him left, I saw him come down, like, I never walked right in when he's there. But I know what's happening, I'm not a fool. I remember once you said you, you moved the curtain away and looked. Yeah, and he was on top, yeah. But <laughs> what did I know? At the time, like I know now, like don't get me wrong, I'm not naive, I'm not foolish. Do you ever think that maybe mom was responsible for some of the abuse? No, I think she suffered more than anybody. That, Mom, like, she lost everything, but she had no control. Like, how many things, times do you think she must have wanted to like, have an ordinary family, or husband, or... Like, she got beaten up. There was nothing she could do. She got... We'd get it. I sometimes wonder what kind of dad I would have wanted. What kind would you have wanted? What kind of dad I would have wanted? Well, probably the kind of dad I could say, Hey, Dad, can I borrow your car keys? Can we go play baseball? Can we go skating? You know, football, throw the ball around, you know? Like, that's what hurt me more a lot of times. When Even when I was in jail, I used to see people's fathers coming and visit them. You know, where's my dad? You know, where's my dad when I needed help? I didn't have a dad. I don't know if I envied it or what, but it used to hurt me. I used to later a lot of times to cry at night, like, Dad, where are you? Even though I didn't have him. I loved him. You know, he wasn't there. I loved him. That's what I wanted. Hello. Uh, yes, is Faith Kenneschuk there, please? Yes, it's uh, Shirley Turcock calling from um, Vancouver. Um, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, it's pretty odd that I should be calling, but uh, about 20 years ago, I lived on Pipeline Road in the house next to you. 
Yes, that's right. Yeah, we had all the dogs. You remember the dogs? <laughs> Since I'm in Winnipeg for four days, uh, I'd like to take a run out there and maybe have a chat. Dad and my stepmother, Marlene, used to live on a farm of sorts on Pipeline Road. We children were kept in the basement. I remember the constant fear. The school bus used to come this way. Those were some of the best moments of my childhood, sitting safely on the bus, the bus rocking me, imagining it would never stop. But it did stop to let me out, and I always got out. There was no place else to go. This time I didn't have to get out. I was just going next door. What was I like as a kid? What did I did I look like? Was I uh... grubby and nondescript? You uh, would just disappear because you didn't have a, a sparkle to you at all. Very. I think also because your clothes were of that type, there wasn't a contrast. For instance, I'm wearing a. Uh, you never wore anything uh, bright. It was always kind of gray and drab, you know. And I think that in yeah. itself. I know I had long hair. Mm -hmm. to, was it not particularly well kept. As we said, you would not be an appealing child. Were we oddballs in the community? I mean, do, how did we fit in as a family? Do, could you get a sense of family? Did you think that we were we? How did we look? I mean, when your dad moved out here with uh, Marlene, this was the f originally. We, uh, when I was first introduced to him, I thought that he, Marlene, was was your mother. But then subsequently, uh, we found out that Marlene was not his wife and not your mother. And I don't think the community completely accepted that. At that time, everybody here was a family unit. They they lived here and they had the kids and. And then you came in here, and I don't think you were accepted. That was, at that time, it was a little bit sinful to live common law. Don't forget, you're talking about the 60s. The family sort of had this black mark to start right with. Right off the start. The kids sure, are bad, the sure, family's sure. Not, yeah. Why bother getting involved with this family? I mean. Well, yes, I guess this is, this is part of it. Uh, I didn't, I guess I look at it bad now, and, I, and, and this is the way it appears to me at that time. I, I didn't look at it, although it, there was something strange about it. They were in our house. They saw our bruises. I needed to know how they could have overlooked us. Didn't you think it was odd that we were never there? At the time, I had babies. I had little ones. And I was very taken up with my own family. And I would see you occasionally, but I don't think I was really aware. See, we... I came from a background where there was no, no abuse at all, you know, and I, there was no reason for me to believe that some of the bruises that I might have seen on the boys were, were from abuse. They might have been from, you know, running and hurting or falling and hurting, but, uh, you know, nothing seemed to be unusual. I just want to ask you one thing. If I was 11 years old, and I had bony knees, and I was a skinny little kid living next door, what would you do for me now, today? How would you do it differently? I would uh, intervene some way. I would speak to you, at least let you speak to me. Um, I would be there. I would be willing to listen. Uh, if there was a problem, I would report it. I think it's my responsibility. Uh, I wouldn't accept what was told to me uh, the way I did then. Still, it'd be quite difficult because whatever happens within the parents' own home, it's their business. And I suppose if we were to see you as being 
uh, asking for help. Certainly, we'd be there to, to assist you, but it, it, you just can't just walk over and say, you know, what's going on here? I mean, it's still privately, that's your own father's. So I think we'd have to think about it as to how we're going to deal with it. And probably we would deal with it. Why in, is it in, you have to go to the father? In my particular case, my mother called a shot. Uh, but my father still had to, he was at the top of the pinnacle. He was the one, top of the hierarchy. I would want to hear what he has to say about it. Why are fathers top of the hierarchy? If only he wanted to hear what I had to say, or my brothers. We were grubby because we weren't allowed to use the bathtub. Our clothes were gray because they were never washed. We had no sparkle because no one loved us. We were kept so isolated. I didn't know how other people lived, but I suspected it wasn't the way we did. Even now, there are so many children like I was, paralyzed, afraid to tell, and no one is asking them. He's, he's a nice kid. Hi. Hi. He looks just like you. <laughs> this is where I live. This is the house with, uh... You got a fireplace? Yeah, I have a fireplace. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> and there were kite flying. Kite flying? Yeah. Out by the ocean. Okay, and you see here? Look at this is Jeffrey. Yes. They're nice pictures. I had so many questions. I knew it would be painful for both of us. I can never understand. I, I only remember Dad as being very violent. Was he ever a nice guy? He could be very loving. Very loving. He was loving? Mm -hmm. Well, when did he change? When you're babies. Really? Just like little babies? Mm hmm. He didn't like crying. And the little baby was all blue for days. The baby was all blue for days. Mm hmm. Me? Well, Welford Moore. Oh, God. Why didn't you leave him? I mean, after he treated you so badly. Well, I thought maybe he could, maybe he would straighten out. Try to give it a chance for the kids' sake. I don't know. There was nobody I could turn to anyway. Nobody. What about Grandma and Grandpa? No way. Couldn't Grandma help you? Didn't anybody ever help you? Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. Not a single friend in the world? No. Nope. Nobody. And and the po what about the police and that? Couldn't they help you? No way. They told me to go home and try and solve it with the old, with. Weren't you ever angry? Weren't you mad at this man? Of that course. this man beating the kids? Of course, I was very angry. What did you do with your anger? Bury it. What could I do? I couldn't bury my anger any longer. 
When I ran away from Dad's farm back to Mom, she wouldn't let me stay. I had to know why. Didn't you know we were going to be sexually assaulted again? No, I didn't. But I told you. I mean, yeah, I... Yeah, I know what that was after. I'm, I mean, just, well... Sometimes when I ran away from home, I told you things were happening there. And that's why I sent you away. So it wouldn't but happen But back no to him. I went back to him. You sent me back to him. I guess I did. Did you ever wonder about me? Wonder where I was all those years? Yes, I and... did. How come you didn't try to get in touch with me? I couldn't. I tried, but I couldn't. Because I wasn't... Because I didn't know where you were. I, I, I thought you didn't love me. You never sent me a birthday card, a Christmas card. I never... Like, how come you didn't... Nobody took a picture of me? I don't have any... I don't have any sense of myself as a child. I... I and I thought you didn't love me. It was never that. There's too much going on. I couldn't think of anything. Well, I want you to know that I don't... I still don't blame you. I know this... But I didn't understand all then that I know now. It's all over. I'm thankful for that. And it's better, isn't it? It's much better. And it's going to get better. I hope for it. He took so much away from her, even her children. I realize now, Mom was a victim too. She didn't protect me, but she couldn't even take care of herself. She was afraid of him too. know how hard it is to be a good parent. There's none on your plate. You try to start with that and see how that goes. How's the chili? Good? Yeah. That's good. How's your chili? Mmm. Exquisite. I feed all of this meat? Mm hmm. Sure. What did you do in preschool today? Did you go I was afraid to have a child. No one taught me how to mother. And at first, that frightened me. I didn't want my abuse to get in the way of loving Jeffrey. And sometimes it has. And I have to keep myself open to seeing that. Put the butter side up so that it doesn't get... John's love for Jeffrey has helped so much. Try getting a bit closer, okay? Okay, try reaching your arm out as far as you can. boy. See? Pretty good, eh? Watch, he'll peel the whole thing now. Just eat the inside. Great, eh? Try a different kind of seed this time. This one? No, that's a sunflower seed. Try another one, a smaller one. A little tiny one. See if this he one? Can, yeah. This See one. if he'll take it. I think he's getting to like you. Yeah. I want Mom to meet Jeffrey. I may have lost 20 years, but Mom lost a lifetime. I stayed for a few more days, and then I left to see my sister, Linda. Linda is one year older than I am. I used to think of her as the lucky one. She didn't have to live with Dad all the time. After she was eight, she lived with Mom. 
I thought she had it made, but Dad found ways of getting to her, too. She left school after grade six. Now she's married and has three children, and she's just begun a new career. I love the title. <laughs> she got a big plaque. <laughs> yeah, right. She'd say, Linda Esthetician, you know. <laughs> I mean, when you first told me, I couldn't even say the word. <laughs> Took me a while, too. I didn't think I could do it. Do you know what I mean? The little bit of schooling I had, and, and it's given me, like, I'm somebody, I'm Linda, I can do something, too. I'm not, I'm not a mat anymore, you know? You're not a what? A mat. A mat. Right. That's how you felt? Yeah, quite often. This will get your blood circulation <laughs> going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Holy crow. I'm not using too much pressure. As long as it gets rid of my double chin, I think we can. You can do a little bit of exercise. Oh too, my with goodness. That. At 14, I ran away and was placed in a foster home. For years, Linda and I hardly saw one another. How were you when Jeff was born? <laughs> what was it when you had his son? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the whole nine months there was a little baby girl in my belly. Like there was no way that there was a, a boy. And I was all prepared for this girl and I was going <laughs> to bring this girl up real nice and liberated. <laughs> and, whole, and then Jeffrey was born and I just knew as his head came out that this was a boy. Like Before I even saw his little penis, this thing was a boy. <laughs> and it floored me and I, I couldn't bond with him. I just... I didn't know what was wrong. All I knew was that he was John's baby. He was not my baby. And I had to give the baby to John. I had to be sure that baby was well protected and loved, but it must not be by me. Because, and I didn't know why. It took me 13 months to find out. Did you know I expect, I expect Do you know what it was? What? I thought I had given birth to Dad. I thought I gave birth to another offender. This little baby boy was going to grow up to be an offender. Did you know I experienced jealousy when Jeff was born? What kind of jealousy? I had never wanted a girl, ever. I never wanted a girl. I never God couldn't a curse me so much as to give me a girl. Why? And he gave me three. Three girls. <laughs> I could not cope. When Felina was born, I said, whoa, what is it? He said, a girl. I said, shove it back. Let it finish growing. I don't want it. <laughs> and I went, same with Crystal. It had to be a boy. It could not be a girl. I did not want a girl because... What would happen if it was a girl? Why? She'd probably go through the same thing as I did. I try to remember when I, how old I was when um, Dad first started coming on to me. And you know what? I, I go back. I can't, I can't remember when he didn't. Like, I can but remember... I, to me, I get the sense that I wasn't walking yet. Do you, you remember how old? I think I was two. I'm sure I was two years old. Because I remember you wanted me to touch him down there. And I didn't. I remember being put in a closet until Mom came home. Mom told me she remembered that time because the the closet stunk of urine and everything else. My diaper was still wet. And I, I still remember. I can still remember. You still remember? Uh, yeah, I can. I get, like flashbacks or something that come in. As if you were really tiny. And it started, like, with touching... Like to put, you know. Suck on the sucker. <laughs> oh, is that what he said to you? Yeah, lots. Suck on the sucker? I can remember you say to me, this is a lollipop. You know, you like candy. And this is a lollipop. Do you remember what you felt? I don't. Could you breathe? No, I couldn't breathe. It was like I was being strangled. I remember that. But I remember the first time Dad went all the way with me when I was five. I remember that. And Mom came home, and I was bleeding down there because he had been so big. And um, Mom came home and asked what happened. And then Dad had said, well, she sat on a board with a nail in it. God, you know, I remember that. I remember the, the story about the board with the nail. And I kept... You know, now, later, I keep wondering, well, why didn't you take me? 
Why? Well, maybe maybe she believed that. Maybe she wanted yeah, to but believe that. Even if I believed it on my own children, you know, it would still be well, I'd still want them checked up to see why. Remember when we told that I went to Auntie Frida's or Grandma's and Grandma's. I told, and I told Frida. I don't know, I've never thought I could tell Mom. As I thought somehow if I told Mom I just didn't think that was the person to go to. I didn't think she could she would understand. I did I tell guess Mom. on some level. I told Mom once too. When how old were you? I think that was when I was about seven years old. Bef oh, so that, that was, was before the court, wasn't it? I don't know, but I know that. I remember the courtroom. I remember the judge. I remember lawyer Green. Oh, you're going to go to hell if you tell the truth. You know, if you don't have the exact time, the exact date, you're going to go to hell because you're lying. But how can you tell how many days there were? There were so many. I, guys used to, I'd be walking down the street and guys used to try to push me in their car. Just because about court, it got into the newspapers. Guys used to literally try to push me. And, oh, ha, ha, you're so hard up, you had to go with to bed with your own dad, you can go to bed with me now. And it was constantly like that for me, constantly. There's... Nobody was on your side. I mean, I was not on your side. I just thought you were... You know, I never even knew that you were pregnant with Dad's baby. I thought it was... I mean, I found out years later. How come you never let me know? Okay, Larry, Wolf, you, Mom, everybody, Grandma and Grandpa, they all thought I was such a slut anyway. And Dad's already done enough damage to us, to all of us. Protect you'd, us? You would have figured... Well, I guess you could say protect. Or maybe you thought we wouldn't believe you. That, too. <laughs> I remember it so well. <laughs> and the baby, I, I never saw the baby. What did the it baby... It was deformed. Its front body was up. Its hips were pushed right to the side like this, and its legs came down, and her eyes were crossed. How long did she live? As, I don't know. I didn't keep her. She had her fingers together, and I remember I said... But she did I die. never want to see the baby. I never want to see it. You keep it away from me. I don't want to see it. And the nurse put it in my arms... Oh, I'll never forget. I tried to tell a priest that it was my dad's baby. I didn't want it. And the priest said, no, no, you know, that, that's not right. Don't accuse your dad. You're supposed to respect, honor thy father, honor thy mother. It didn't matter. Everybody thought it was such a sleaze anyway. What difference did it make if it was dad's or my, you know, dad's or somebody else's baby? The baby died, right? Yeah, eventually. I can't remember when because I blocked it out. I even named her. I gave her a name. It was bad enough she had a mother that didn't really want her. <laughs> I was so horrible to you. You had, I was never of any support. When I went to the foster home, I thought, I've got normality now. I've got this white house. I've got these foster parents. And I thought, well, I had to give away the sleazy, slutty family I came from. And you were part of that. That's why when you came to see me in Toronto, I just called you a sleazy bitch. <laughs> Linda and her husband found that living in a small town does not protect children. When their middle daughter was 11, she was abused by a neighbor. So Selena didn't tell you she had been abused? She told me after I had asked, I sort of said like, um, Felina, uh, you've been having nightmares lately. Can you tell me why? Like, because I knew something was bothering her, but you And, um, then she came out and told me the whole thing, so it was sort of like half on her own and half with me asking. Dennis and I loved the kids so much. We never hurt them. We don't spank them. We don't believe in spanking. We believe in talking and, and, and just loving. Why, what gives a right to some Joe Blow to come up and hurt my child? Was it because I was abused? Does it say sucker on your face? Did he know? Who 
So for 14 years, we never talked to each other. You phoned me on my wedding date, though. Did I? You did. From a hospital, I think you were in. Yeah. It seemed like you had so much of a life of your own. I was so happy the day I seen you, though. <laughs> Finally got to meet your nieces. You guys and... thought I was so upstanding and so together. And there I was, rotting in a mental institute. <laughs> but you were, you got help. You had... That's right. You built I your had world help. up. Help that you didn't get. And I think that has made a whole lot of difference between the two of us. Yeah, you're so liberated. How did you ever get that way? <laughs> you know, how did you ever get that way? I struggled. As a teenager, I never felt accepted. And I could never really accept myself. I tried, but I just couldn't. At times, I felt so depressed. It seemed easier to die. I was 17 before I found a good, caring doctor. It took us nine years to work through it. Well, you'd start saying things like, no, no, don't, or you'd start... I said, no, no, don't. I was sitting there watching, trying to understand what was going on. And then oh, after so I... I had sort of drifted off or something. Yeah, you would, you would be... You would be psychotic at the time, and what you would be doing was reacting in my office as if you were back in your family home, and, and your father was coming towards you or going to do something to you. And you would, we would go through the experience of, of feeling that I was going to be the attacker uh, and, and acting out that possibility, or, the, or you'd, you'd hallucinate visually yourself and your father involved in sexual activity. In the room, in I the would room, visualize the room. The and, and that would just last briefly at times, and then when you got to trust me more, you would, so that was, those sometimes would last quite a while. And then I'd try and bring you back by telling you, giving as much information about the reality that you were in. And then we'd talk about what you'd experienced. But just to scare me sometimes, I used to be frightened about what was going to happen, whether you were going to be able to pull yourself together. You'd wish for things from your family that they couldn't deliver. You'd go away at Christmas time, full of plans to return to Winnipeg and buy your mother's affection with gifts and money and when you'd come back broken and hurt. And I would be scared for you about what would happen. I thought I could get her somehow to... You know, one thing you taught me was how to let go. Goals. I mean, I, I could not make her love me. I tried and I tried. And you helped me to see that I had to let go of that. That, that relationship was never going to be there. I was never going to have a mother in the capacity that a, that a normal child has. I was never going to have a father. It was so hard to let go of those things, so hard to let go of knowing I was not going to be a loved child. Well, I found out that wasn't the only kind of love in the world, and that you don't die without it. Yeah. But you began to get love from lots of people. Yeah. Good love, good, good care love. love. It's great wind. Of course, then we probably. I'll put the runners on. Janny's been with me since grade 11. My first long relationship. To her, I was never crazy. She simply accepted that I was different. She stayed away when I needed distance and she came closer when I was ready. She never made me feel small. I used to go to her house and we'd spend hours together talking through the night. She told me I was strong. That's what I needed to hear.
Well, they're still answering back. I never thought I could be anyone of value, but work helped to change that for me. Maybe see if I can get the engineer to put in a modem and take off the line driver. What do you think? The first good job I had was as a clerk for the telephone company. And without being at all sure of myself, I worked my way up to technician. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be a couple more minutes. Rapid. Now I'm a supervisor in the engineering department. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Each success reassures me that I am worthwhile, something I seem to continually have to prove. It's easy to hide from personal relationships in the technical world. There was a time when that really suited me. Well, I have a few down on the fourth floor. Now I find I'm choosing work that brings me closer to people. Good idea. <laughs> Somebody should tell you. They should have a guide who should do it on their own. Because it can be dangerous. John and I met at work. I never thought I would marry. And when John... I said no. I was afraid of being absorbed by him. Of losing my spirit. And I'd only just found it. There's a family in here, I think, John. Pardon me. I think there's a family in there. Family. A family of wood ducks. We've been together for two years. We've had to make some adjustments, particularly in our sexual relationship. I still have to feel as though I am in control. Can you make your world famous duck call in the front of your duck? <laughs> He's so unlike my dad. He finds power from within himself instead of stealing it from others. I'm able to trust him. Start working on it and you could see what's going to come out on it. I can see there's brass under there. Oh, yeah, this is all solid brass. Yeah. My brother Larry and Mona restore antique furniture. Should we place this piece? It's, you're looking about $10. Larry is the youngest of us, and we all tried to protect him from Dad, but sometimes it wasn't possible. When I got away, it was Larry I most wanted to rescue, and I did for a while. We shared an apartment. I worked, and he finished school. We tried so hard to be a normal family. Yeah. Sure. Can't believe you're living in the country. <laughs> Why? Because you always hated the country. Do you blame me? No, I think we all hated the country. I used to sneak out the basement window, climb up on the oil tank out the window, and Dad had this thing on his car that they used to carry the instruments in. Remember that thing? And he used to whistle. You could hear the car coming, you hear the whistling. Quarter mile so, you know, we're going to die like right 30 back. 30 seconds to get home, right? Back in the bed. <laughs> so nobody would know. Oh, no. yeah, that was pretty did bad. Did you ever get caught? We got caught once, though, when they went out. No. And we thought they were gone, and we snuck back upstairs. We were peeking through the kitchen window, and when they were gone, we turned the TV on because we weren't supposed to watch TV. Yeah. And they came driving back up the driveway with the lights off, real quiet, right, and snuck in. They wanted to catch us. Yeah, me. they did, too. We got it that night. What did Dad used to do for a living? He was an entertainer. No, other than that, didn't he work during the day? Because remember, he used to, didn't jobs, he bring a concrete you know, truck home once, too? I don't know. Where he was going to? Was he a truck driver? I don't See, I can't even remember did. that. See, he never talked to us. He That's never right. told us who he was. We didn't even know what our father did for a living, and we, we lived sang. there. Yeah, but we knew he sang, yeah. but he had but these during other. The day, like, what did he do we during did. the day? They never, really? We never knew anything about the family. Isn't that we, strange? I don't, do you know who your aunts and uncles are? Do you know how many, how many brothers and sisters your father had? I bet you haven't got a clue. No, no, a few of them. Does he have family? Wow. Who, what, where are my roots? You haven't got a, a single... We were not talked to about, to about anything. We were just simply used. I think Larry changed a lot after he met you. 
he grew in his confidence or something. I see big changes. Oh, yeah. When I first met him, he was such I a was? negative person. Oh, yes. You're so negative. That was no good, was it? Playing guitar or something like that. And you would have to tell him, no, it was great. I need reinsurance. But now I, I just find just in the last, I would say, six to eight months, he has gone from way down here to up here. I notice it. I know people say you shouldn't work together and live together, but it goes good for us. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like we've been together for five years, four years straight now, almost solid straight, every day yeah. almost. Yeah, working together. Yeah, and still when I'm away from her, she's away from me. She <laughs> calls me, you know what I mean? Can you come home? Can you come home? <laughs> I can't believe that. I think there's something wrong there. <laughs> That's not supposed to be right like that. Because you were abused, that you might get violent like that yourself? No, I don't think so. I think I can control it. I hit her once, I must say. He pretty well broke down and said he would never do it again, never did. Yeah, that was bad news. Were you ever afraid, though, marrying him? I mean, here's this guy, he came from... Yeah, that was even before we were married. Yeah, no, after that, when he did that, I knew that he would never do it again. Because he, just the look of his face showed that... It, I don't know, it just showed that he would... It wouldn't happen. He's always joking and having a good time. And yeah, that's right. For the, all the bad times I had, I have to make up for it and have a good time. And that's good. Do you have a good time? More now. I take, it's taking me longer. It's taking me a long time to get less serious and to let my hair down and yeah, giggle. I think you're a very serious person. Yeah. But do you know, I'm getting a lot... Well, I noticed of, a yeah, change in you from when I saw you at the wedding. At your wedding. Yeah, then when I saw you the other day, I... I'm it was strange. When I saw you in the car there, I felt, wow, I felt even closer than the last time I saw you for the first time, you know what I mean? Yeah, when you walked the in the door, it was like, here's this reborn person again or something. Just so much life in your face and beauty, and it was great. Oh, really? oh. Most of my life, I thought it only happened in my family. I felt so isolated, even in therapy. Then I discovered I was not alone. We are in the millions. We've been made to feel ashamed and guilty, especially if our bodies responded. Talking about our experience helps. I work with members of a survivor group. I really think that, that I just blanked it out of my mind tried to forget about it and and never happened when it first started for me i believe i believed that it would kill my mother and that was really true for me that it would hurt her so that's how i explained it that i i wouldn't say anything or i would just accept it so i accepted it when I was about 14, I guess somehow I decided um, that there was something just too sexy about me, and I'd been born that way, and um, so somehow I was <laughs> it was all my fault. And then what I did was eat myself into oblivion so that I'd get so fat that you could not tell that I had any sexual parts. So I did that for years. For years, I was just... Very, very fat. <laughs> I remember that um, I could not look at myself in a mirror. That, that I, I, I really found my body to be very disgusting. I was so ashamed of my body. And to this day, I, I still find that to be a problem. Accepting my, my body and, and you know, liking yeah. myself. 
For some of us, even a single incident has had major consequences. Sexual abuse happens in all kinds of families. He's an attorney and people go to him for advice. He's always been very involved in his church on the board and what I'm realizing is that I've been taking care of him. I've been protecting him to keep him and the people he cares about from knowing this horrible truth. Feeling guilty if I want something for me. Some relief for me to tell. I want to tell. Then I'm feeling guilty because it might hurt him. And right now I'm feeling strong and I'm not going to do that anymore. He has to take care of himself. And I'm taking care of me. I had been taking care of myself, facing my family, but there was still something I had to do. I had to go back to Pipeline Road, even if I was afraid. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew my journey wouldn't be complete until I went there. The people who live there now said I could look around. Night after night I lay there, afraid to sleep, wondering when his hand would reach for me next. I always went to bed with my clothes on, hoping to protect myself, but I couldn't. It's there that I learned how to leave my body on the bed and to take myself to a safer place where he couldn't get me. I would hide in the wall, a place too hard and too cold for him to touch. But when he took me upstairs and put me in a chair, I had nowhere to go. And he took me until there was almost no me left. felt a part of me had been missing but in that basement I recovered the child who had been hiding in the wall she was the survivor in me she had always been there she has made me feel strong 